Welcome to the Game of Thrones Iron Podcast. I'm Mike Blackfire here with two other people to speak some Game of Thrones chat with you. We got Rose Snow, bitch of Westeros, leader of the Red Vipers Bannerman. How you doing, Ro? Hello. Hello. <laughs> and Sean Pike. We do not sell, but we do drink. We do drink. I have a beer named after a founding father. And I have a beer that tastes like water with a slight taste of piss. Um, and beer. And beer. And beer. Or the piss of someone who drank beer. <laughs> Real beer. <laughs> Sean, why are we here? We are here to discuss Game of Thrones, not bad beer. Uh, we're going to discuss Game of Thrones in a PTI-like format. We've got six topics, um, and for each of those topics, I'm going to introduce it, and then we'll speak for about five minutes. Everyone will give their opinion. Uh, just so you know, the podcast is rated R-ish. We're going to try not to make it too bad for the little ones in case they're listening, but it is, a, it is an adult podcast. so It's an adult show, too. Yeah. I mean... But yeah, we'll try to keep Unless it Unless you watch Game of Thrones with your little ones, then yeah. that would just be weird. That would be weird. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, yeah, those parts. <laughs> Incest and, the parts and breasts. That, okay. That, that Mike here likes. Let's focus. All right. Um, first topic. Best moment of season three. Ro, you want to go? Sure. I'll go first. Uh, my best moment of season three would definitely be Brienne of Tarth and Jamie Lannister. Uh, I felt intrigued by the part where uh of course the relationship has built in uh built up by then but then jamie goes back knowing something's wrong with brienne and realizes that the bloody mummers have her in a bear pit fighting a bear and that for me was definitely my most memorable moment of season three i uh i agree that uh their storyline i think is better in the show than the book i know that might be blasphemy mm. But uh, it moves at a better pace. It's real slow in Storm of Swords. And uh, for me, the best moment specifically was in episode 5, Kissed by Fire, when Jamie's in the bath and he's talking about um, why he killed Targaryen, the Mad King. Uh, I thought that was real well done. One of the best things about Game of Thrones is that they, they take characters that you don't like that are villains and they make you see their point of view mm -hmm. and i think in that bath scene and throughout the whole season like you start to like jamie you really this guy who threw a kid from a balcony especially in that bath scene you you really start to like jamie so that was my my, my right. i totally agree i think the main thing that uh the author's trying to say is that there is no real good guys and bad guys in this show. Like, even if they're bad, there's a side to them that you realize there's, there's good guys on every side. I think that's actually even a quote from next season I saw in the promo. There's good guys on every side and there's bad guys on every side. And and, and also, that it's interesting that Brienne, a woman, uh, ends up being one of the, the, the truest, quote unquote, like real knights in the story, you know? And, uh, and it turns out Jamie's actually an honorable person, even though, like you said, I mean, it's amazing. We came from... Um, him throwing a child out the window to us rooting for him but you know it's amazing what a little backstory will do do uh, while we're on this and since this this is all of our best moment is their relationship well it's not my best moment but i'm just okay all right i, it, I was just commenting on hers, uh, hers but, but okay so we agree and you're wrong so um <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, i think you guys are missing a pretty important scene right, well, but what yeah. we're trying to be more rich but, but good question good question Gad. um is their relationship romantic or is it Platonic. Respect. Okay. Platonic respect, I believe. I think Jamie um, actually looks up to Brienne in a way. I think I think Brienne brought something out of him that he's been repressing. So, is she the first woman that he respects and doesn't turn into an object? I believe that there's a bond between them that's created in season three. And I think that it could go somewhere. Um, I think maybe perhaps they would like us to speculate that right now. Um, and now, you know, of course he ends up <clears throat> back with Cersei in the end of the season. So then you're thinking, well, you know, he's back with Cersei and you're really not thinking of Brienne anymore. But I, I do believe that there's a bond that's created between them. And um, I don't know if it's so much a romantic bond, but it sort of seemed that way to me. Okay. I guess we'll see. 
So what's your best moment? Well, I, I mean, I got to just say it just because it's been leading up to it. It's the Red Wedding. I mean, I know it's the horriblest moment. I know I, I, I honestly can't even watch it more than twice. Um, where I, I'm one of those people that watch this show a thousand times. It's episode nine, The Reigns of Castamir, is probably one I've watched the least, but I respect the most because so well done, I felt. I know some people here are going to disagree with me on that. But and I do. Yeah. But I do feel like um, it was well done. It was well constructed. I love how they got us familiar with that song, The Reigns of Castamere. Because don't forget, that was just words on a piece of paper. You know, the, the brilliant people of the show got a catchy song. I mean, I'm hearing it in my head right now. As You know, and it's it came on and just the whole buildup of it. And, and I hope that the people that didn't read the books got the feeling that all the people that read the books of that, who didn't know, got that, oh shit, did that just happen moment, which was really amazing. Um, and that's, what do you think, Sean? Well, for everyone who's listening, one thing, by the way, Ro has never read the books. Right. Uh, Mike and myself, Sean, we have read the books, just to give perspective. I refuse and, to read the books. Which is which is good. I love that, it, because yeah. yeah, Ro will give us just strictly the HBO show Version where we we got a little different, so you'll get from Ro just that. So she doesn't really know any spoilers. Uh, that's what's coming. And right. uh, well, based on that, I think that I mean they they kill his wife. They they stab the pregnant right. woman, which is different. In, which Lots is different. Right. So right. they gave people who read the books. You think you know what's coming here is shock value, and I thought right. that was. I mean, because you need to be shocked in in the Red Wedding. Like that's the whole point of it. Like Rob Stark dies. Like that's it's shock. Right. Well, if anyone saw the interview, um, Martin actually refers to that um, how HBO had changed scenes and it makes a joke several times throughout his interviews regarding that situation where HBO killed off more people than he did. So, right. <laughs> um, in the reality of the situation, is for me. I've learned my lesson with Stephen King that my feelings on <clears throat> the book and the movie were very different for me and I just don't want to um, do that again perhaps when the seasons are over then maybe I'll consider reading the books and being that the books are so mishy-mashy into the show you know uh, then that makes me feel like it's just not something that I, I I'm watching the show for the acting for the storyline for the actors and not for the literature and not for the different versions of the book. So that that is my standpoint. Well, only exclusive would be show-oriented. That's so. great, and we need that. That's important to have that, because it's, like I said, well, how, well, let me ask you, did the Red Wedding shock you? Just the, the fact of what happened. Did it, like, holy, they just killed, like, all those main characters? Like, did it, I, did it have that to you? I definitely can say that there was a shock value. It's not every day, even in some of the worst movies you've ever seen in your life. You don't see someone stabbing a pregnant woman to death. Right, yeah, that was pretty You know, cool. you're waiting for this baby to be born. You're waiting for little Ned to pop mm. out and see what comes Oh, they had that. to do that. They had to <laughs> say right. Ned on the horse, and right? It's bad enough you cut the guy's head off. Now you gotta kill little unborn Ned. It's right. freaking so horrible. It, it is, there is a shock value to it. However, I disagree with Mike. I don't think that the part was done that well. Mm. I'm sorry, I don't agree. He thought Catelyn was great. I didn't. I didn't agree. All right. We'll ding that topic and move on to the next topic. Two. What storyline are you most looking forward to for season four? <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Mike, you wanna go? Do you want me to start? Yeah. Um. Without you know getting into any kind of spoilers for anything, I I, I think we all know that there is uh, the Red Vipers, uh, the House Martell coming to the story finally. It's exciting. Um, I love the character. I love the Red Viper. We actually, you know, not to get into it later on, we talk about the Game of Thrones Ascent. It's a Facebook game that you can play on all the platforms. We actually have a, uh, an alliance called the Red Viper's Bannerman. We're, uh, I'm a big fan of it. it. It's He's a great character. I love how he, you know, he's there with his hidden intention of getting revenge and um, all that stuff coming up. And there's a big battle coming up, you know, not to have any spoilers, but... Um, I'm looking forward to that. Seeing the Martells come into the story. Pedro Pascal, the guy who they right. cast as it, like I feel like he's gonna play the character real well. Like Good, this yeah. smart, I agree. Like, I think Spanish. they cast it very well, and I know a lot of people are very excited with the the actor they chose for that. Yeah, part. he looks good. I don't know his. I don't know anything he's done in the past, but he looks like he's gonna do right. a good job. 
I guess it's somewhat irrelevant, so I won't even get into it. But go ahead. Ro, your what you're looking my, for? My um, <clears throat> I guess <laughs> the dog wants to put her two cents in here. Um, <laughs> going forward, my my favorite part is probably going to be to see Arya, um, where Arya goes in the storyline. Um, I am curious to see this little uh, scorned little girl turn into a warrior. That is definitely for me. What I'm looking forward to. Well, she's already almost there. She shanked that other guy in the neck, right? Right. So she's got a. And that's something they're they're doing faster in the show, right? Than the books. Just like I mean, they're doing a lot of stuff. It's a show. It's going to be faster. But right. like, you know, we're still waiting for him to figure out her storyline in the books. So in the show, it's it's fun. It's just nice and fun. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that what I'm most looking forward to is. Uh, uh, Yara Greyjoy okay. going after her brother because yeah, as yeah, you are right. that's not, not in the book. Not even part of the story. Yeah. Right. So me uh, too. I have no idea and it's it's you know what is that going to be about? Um, right. Am I going to like it or is it going to be a change that's too different from the liter literature for me mm. or am I going to like it? So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm curious as well. I can, I can agree with that. With Theon's and you know Theon's character yeah. and whatnot. Where is she going to end up in this? Because, um, well, where is she in this story? Does is she, um, well, I don't want to spoil anything. I don't remember that part of it. Oh, yeah, well, she's kind of dealing with the whole, the kings, who's going to be the king's king. Room. Yeah. Right. And all that. Her uncles and, right. you know, she tries to put her cap in and gets rejected. So now she's not doing that. Now she's busy trying yeah. to save Theon. So that's right. interesting. Interesting yeah. change. I wonder if they're streamlining the whole Greyjoy story. Because, mm. I mean, it's a good story, but... Well, yeah. she's basically overriding her father to do it as yeah. well, so... Right. Yeah, maybe, maybe like you're saying, maybe they're just kind of tightening it up. Because then a lot of people felt that that book wasn't as interesting to buy in. But I, I think... We got a little more buy-in on the show, but I don't know. How do you, how do you feel? You think people really root for the Greyjoys? I mean, it's a hard family to root for. It is. Uh, again, you know, just like we had referred to before, it's hard to have compassion for someone who just burned two children and hung them. Um, well, yeah, Theon, yeah. Right. So it basically is. Uh, I think that the torture scenes with Ramsay were probably uh, striking a lot of interest there because I, mean, I think that's something that you men probably cringed for more than any of us. Oh, yeah. Sausage? But... No, sausage. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Italian sausage, don't worry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, so it is tough to say. I think that it's just an excerpt of the show. And uh, the, the Greyjoys, I don't know. I Maybe that's where the sister's uh, role is here, is to, to re redeem the Greyjoys, perhaps. Maybe. You know? All right, topic three, and I'm going to back up because Ro's going to explode when I <laughs> introduce this topic. Uh -oh. uh, but uh, recasting of actors. Yes. This is a big one for season four. Uh, so, what are, Ro, uh, Mike and I will be quiet as you soliloquy on the recasting of actors. <laughs> Let's talk about Ed Screen being recasted. For Dario Naharis, I could not wait for Dario to come back. Um, they essentially closed season three with Danny and Dario and this love interest that's just been sparked. And I just couldn't wait to see what was going to come of that. I don't feel anyone could possibly top the original Edward playing Dario Naharis. I just don't see it. It's very disappointing. And I realize, like we've discussed earlier is that yes, it's happened with the mountain three times. They had a goal with the mountain and that was to make them bigger and scarier. I thought, I thought the number one guy was fantastic. He was my favorite. Um, I love the first guy, yeah. Right, you know, they, they always say the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So I'm not sold on the fact that he needed to be bigger. Um, but getting back to Dario, this guy just had a flow to him, a charisma, a look to him. He just sold this part. I was like, I really thought it was a decent match to put him up against Danny Targaryen. And I just, I'm very disappointed. I have to he say. He felt like the guy in the books. Like he, I don't know, I, I thought he felt like the guy in the books. Like you said, he was charismatic. And to bring back the mountain idea, the mountain, especially in the show, was a side character. So to recast him doesn't hurt my enjoyment or the believability of the show. To recast. A guy like the Hario who is front and center 
that's that's something different, you know. Right, absolutely. And like you said, you know, yeah, like we you know we had already said before, is is the flow of this guy. He just felt right for this part. He just he felt right. He seemed perfect. I don't know why they took him down. Um, there's just you know saying that they did. They didn't say why, but I guess that's irrelevant because he's already been recasted, and it's disappointing. Um, I'd hate to snub the new actor because of course it's not his fault. But no, we gotta give him a shot. But still. Yeah. Right. You know. So I think it's uh, Mikhail Hoosman. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I just. Um, I don't see replacing the guy. I just don't. Yeah, I, I think I think it's interesting that you know. First of all, this is such a great character-based story. I mean, the, the the this whole story is not about dragons. I don't believe it's right. not about you know uh, White Walkers. It's about characters, like humanity of characters, and buying into these characters. And it's hard when you when you switch actors because you know we're buying into not only the character now, like reading the pages. We're we're buying into the actor's performance and like to start over it, it almost like makes you makes you go back to square one. I gotta I gotta learn this character again. Is this guy gonna do what I what I'm used to seeing now? You know? But you know, hey, it, it is these are actors we're talking about. These are people's jobs. I mean things happen. You know, we, we right. can't guarantee that everybody's gonna keep the same job all the time. There's there's money issues and things like that. But it does take away, I think. I think it is a valid uh I mean, I think we'll get over it. It's not like Peter Dinklage is being recast. Right, right. well, yeah, that would, that would know, be devastating. But right. it, it's, we'll see. Well, right, we'll for see. me, you know, how many men can be that romantic rolling two decapitated heads out of a bag? I don't know if <laughs> like, someone else could try? actually pull no. that off. I think I could pull that off. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm a skeptic. All right, uh, we'll move on from that bitter topic to the next topic, which is a, a funner topic. This one will be happy about the acting ability of kids on the show. Yeah. That was really, you know, me squawking about that once again. Um, for me, I don't know if it's because of my mother or whatnot, but I've seen the capability of these kids. I've watched, you know, uh, we just watched an interview with uh, Joffrey Baratheon. Joffrey, yeah. Jack uh, Jack in Dublin, Ireland. Jack, yeah, Jack Leeson. Right, right. Uh, right. Uh, his name is Jack in real life. And, uh, yeah, so it was a very interesting. Um, he's a, he seems like a great kid, but... Uh, like I had said in the past, is this is Joffrey Baratheon, this kid that you just wish somebody would swing in a rock and fucking smash his head off. <laughs> right. But in the same breath, the acting of this kid is absolutely phenomenal. Probably one of the best actors on the show. Pulls this part off like it is nobody's business. And I think his he is Phenomenal! This he part. reminds me of like Joaquin Phoenix in Gladiator, mm. where it's that like, I love this villain. Like you know, yeah. Like, it's just. I mean, it's a test. Everybody hates the character, and that just it's just it's a testament to his acting. Right. I mean, the more we hate him, the more he's doing his job. And man, do I hate him! So he's doing great. And uh, yeah, just the kids in general. Think about kids when you normally cast a kid. You expect a kid performance. These kids are doing. High level acting, absolutely. High level acting with with very. I mean, look at Aria. Mm. All the things going on she's dealing with, and you could see it on her face. You could see that she's she's tough, but she's still a kid, and it's just like so complex. And I'm really, I think and she's another true. one that plays uh, the character so true to the book. Like she's like you said, this tough little you right. know, little rascals type kid. Perfect. That is just you know, I mean, she's awesome. I remember mean, she did that. Over the London Olympics two years ago, where she did that commercial with like Patrick Stewart, mm. and like she's fun, like she's just fun to watch. Right. Yeah, my best moment with her is when she, I think she said to the Hound, um, "I'm gonna stick a knife through the back of your skull or something like this. One day I'm gonna, I don't know, just I forgot right. the exact words, but it was like when they were talking before they went to the Red Wedding, they were in a scene, and like she just turned to him and said, you know, one day I'm gonna." I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> it's just right. real badass moments. Side note on this topic: it is the aging of the kids. Has it or will it affect the show? Because I mean, the show is gonna go by slowly. Is I don't it... believe it will. I think that it's supposed to take place. Um, you know, Joffrey's playing a 13-year-old essentially, and um, you know, I guess that was the whole. You know, I guess for me, it seems to me, it seems to make sense for me. The only one I've noticed is Bran. Like, Bran right. shot up. Right. And that, yeah. you know, you, you use the word, like, believability all the time. That was like, oh, he's a lot older. But uh, right. he's the only one. Yeah. 
I think it'll be fine. The ages are different, right? Because I think in the books, they're a lot younger, all the kids. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a more medieval type. Right. Right. Where they're younger. Which is good because, you know, it would be a little uncomfortable. Yeah, at least they're like, of, like that whole scene with Sansa. If she was like, you know, looked 12. I mean, how old is she supposed to be? In I, she's, she's just that, flowers. Just right. flowers. I mean, at least 13, Sansa 13. looks. That's a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So at least she looks like it's not too much of a. You know. Well, in in the show, <laughs> Cersei is considered old, right? You know, and like old and dried up kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, you know, with with the other the chil- the children actors, which is you know, of course, uh, what Sean was bringing up here is, you know, it's for me, it's all across the board. Them getting older doesn't really uh, sway me. I think that it's logic, and I I feel like you know, Arya maybe running around with a. Uh, with a sword at nine years old would be weird. Mm. So I guess for me it makes sense. Yeah. All right, next topic. Uh, Game of Thrones Ascent, which is a Facebook game that you could play on other platforms. Quoted um, number one game on Facebook. Quoted number one game on Facebook. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to focus on, uh, they're going to reintroduce, they're going to introduce, I should say, a new house, House Martell. And a House Aaron as well. Into that game, really? Okay, yeah. House Aaron as well. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Roe leads a big alliance in that game, the Red Vipers Bannerman, which is one of the top 20 alliances. We are top 13 currently. Okay. Yep, we've come a long way in a short period of time. The, um, the alliance was established September 1st, um, basically just established by a group of friends that we had, you know, got to know each other. And it, we created this, uh, this place where um, it's a no holds barred, we're friends, we joke. Um, just like we grew up together, um, I am no leader. I am one of the one of the bannermen. Um, somebody has to have the title, and that's me. But um, essentially, you know, uh, we have the Vipress. Uh, we have a no fealty alliance because you know people do reincarnate. There are several houses. There is going to be more houses. Um, you know, so basically, for me to have chosen a fealty for the alliance wouldn't have made sense. It is a Martell alliance. A lot of duplicate uh, alliance names were being done and we did not want that to happen and as you Sean are very well aware that I play House Martell in the game uh, Game of Thrones Ascent uh, I'm sorry Game of Thrones card game I play House Martell a lot and I play House Stark so uh, for me the Red Viper definitely stood out Um, one of our players wanted the name Barrowman another one of our players was very big on the red uh, part of, aspect of it, so we ended up being the Red Vipers Bannerman. Um, we have never been uh, replicated for that reason, and there's no way we could ever be duplicated. We are by fact the greatest alliance in this game, and I say that because uh, it's been proven to me time and time again. No, it really is. It's a good alliance because they're the best. I'm a member, but you know I've got two kids, so it's hard for me to get on all the time and play. But it's in, in these type of games that Mike and I have played video games and yeah for a long time, you know, it's hard to be in the top and still, you know, be somebody with a life. So right. the way Rose kind of put it together, that's that's possible. And that's that's awesome. Yeah, I mean it's it's a great I have been like Sean said, I've played a lot of games and, and the group is just great. I mean all the guys in there they're all got a great you know, great and, sense of and humor girls. We have and girls and, you know, guys. And I just say guys, but I mean everybody, but, uh, there you go. Hey. <laughs> nah, but it, it, it really is a great group of people. And, uh, well, yeah, we should probably just maybe talk about what the game is. Cause people probably don't even know what the heck we're talking about with alliances and everything. It's a Facebook game. It's a web-based game, a uh, browser based, based off the show, not the books, based off the HBO show. It actually says it, um, you create a character, you create a fealty, you pick which fealty you want. And you go through meaning which house you belong to, because believe it or not, sometimes people are not sure what that means. Right. That means like you either pick House Stark, House Targaryen. What are the other ones? Greyjoy, Lannister, Baratheon, Baratheon, of course, and uh, Tyrell. Tyrell. And uh, like we said, they're going to be opening up two more houses as an option. And what you can do in this game is you could reincarnate. Uh, which means you could play through the first chapter, start over as another alliance, and you get to keep some of your power from the previous, uh, some like certain things from the last one. So you could actually go through all the houses to experience the game, and it's a lot of fun. And like I said, um, being in an alliance is nice because you get to do a lot of the player versus player stuff, and they have alliance versus alliance, which uh, basically 
you build camps and you, you go to war with with the rest of the alliances. So it's a great game. You should probably check it out. If you do check it out, um, just you know maybe send us a message or a, you know comment to us that you want to try out the Red Vipers, and you know we'll be glad to let you give it a shot. Well, that's the joy of of the Red Vipers Bannerman is that everybody is very helpful there. Uh, whether you're a level ten or you're a level five hundred, you're treated the same. Uh, any questions are always welcomed. We don't shun anybody for those type of things. Uh, we give everyone attention as much as possible. Um, I know for myself, I do. I think we have a great admin team and we certainly have uh, some fantastic members. They really put a lot of their time and energy into this alliance and that's what's made it, uh, you know, my pride and joy. And um, we have some fantastic allies uh, as well in AVA. And we have some fast, fantastic enemies. Uh, we have some people that have definitely handed us our asses. And we have some people that um, really surprised me. <laughs> I thought they were going to be a lot better than they were. So, you know, it's, it's got a, lot of bit, a little bit of everything. A lot of humor. And yeah. uh, I think if you're a fan of the shows, it's worth checking out. At right. least give it a whirl. You Definitely know, an adult game. Give it a shot, run through, and uh, I, I say, you know, I'm a big fan of the show. I enjoy playing it because it's just you're in that world a little bit, and, right? And like, like they said, it's the best game on Facebook voted, and you know, there's a lot of games on Facebook. So, and so it was, I say give for it a me, shot. it was a good buffer for the seasons going down until April. It, it created a nice buffer for me, and like I said, you know, you know, the show is only on once a week, so you know, we talk about these things, and we we. Like I said, we joke, we share, we help each other, and uh, very close knit group. And I couldn't really ask for more. I'm cool, I'm honored. Yeah, me too. It's a great, great alliance. All right, let's wrap up with a kind of a fun podcasty type topic. What is the worst actor on the show? Worst actor, bro. You got one? Well, when you say worst actor, let's just elaborate. Are we talking about somebody who just sucks as an actor? Are we saying, you know, well, I'm really not crazy about this this part, this this? I think act role. role. Right? Yeah, I would, I mean... Like, who's not doing their job over there, acting? Well, you know, being that I am the bitch, I guess I'll go first. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely going to go with Sansa on this one. Okay. Um, I don't like her ass-kissing demeanor, and I think that, you know, everybody knows that I'm always the one saying, you know, get an effing spine. Um, <laughs> I don't like her pushover demeanor. She's actually abused and saying, but I love him. It makes no sense. Um, I don't like her her acting abilities mainly because she reminds me of Paris Hilton um, in, in more ways than one she looks like her she sort of talks like her and it's just I, I'm not I'm not loving it like I you know I could take it or leave it kind of thing you know um, and I know we were just referring to kid actors and, and, and even still she's probably my least favorite one okay uh, Sean you got you know, everyone's. I'm going to take the question as who, who do you think's not doing their job? Because I, I think the acting's really. I mean, not to be a fanboy, but the, I think the acting's really good on the show. So I'm going to agree with with Ro. I don't. I'm not saying she's a bad actress. Uh, I don't even know her name, which is really horrible. But um, <laughs> I'm I, not sure either. I, I don't think she's a bad actress. I just uh, it's a wooden character. You know, it just. I don't know. I don't. I mean, not the, the the character in the book. I've started to like now that I've gotten into a Dance with Dragons and and the more recent books. But just in the show, it just yeah. For the record, her name is Sophie Turner. Okay, I, Sophie Turner. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm gonna take the opposite side on that and just say, listen, uh, she's the death of innocence. She's like I. She's the character that's trying to personify the you know the the, the girl. Who, who loves, you know, princess stories, you know, Snow White to Seven Dwarfs, so I'm going to marry, you know, marry a prince and all that nonsense. And then she just gets it slapped right in her face that reality really isn't like that, honey. And she's starting to see it now. And she was, I felt like she was just playing the game, you know, saying that she loves her beloved Joffrey because she knows that she's going to get, you know, executed if she doesn't and, you know, tortured. So I, she gets tortured anyway. So she where does. Is the, where's the draw? She, there? you know, I mean, for her to, I don't know. I just feel like she's just trying to play that part, and you know, maybe she's not the best actor on the show, but I mean, there's parts like uh, Battle of Blackwater when she's in the room with all the women and Cersei. Like, it's she does a really good job there, and you know, her interactions with the Hound are really good. So I'm it's not like, saying that her yeah. acting sucks. I think that she plays the part pretty well. I don't like the part. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, me where, you know, Arya sort of 
makes her ground and Jon Snow makes his and so on and so so forth. And I just, like I said, I could take it or leave it. I, I'd rather watch Shay over Sansa and she's a main character. It's a tough topic because like, all right, there's another show we all like, you know, The Walking Dead. And right. like, there is Andrea. Like, actors mm. that I just oh, detest yeah. well, it, on that right. show. If you asked like, me that, it would be Andrea. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. there's no, on Game of Thrones, it's it's a more difficult time. I don't get that. Like, I don't, I, I agree. That's a good thing you brought up Walking Dead. Because I remember every time Andrea came on, I cringed and I wanted to run and hide. <laughs> yeah. That's how bad she he, was. He was, like, like counting fucking, it down I, while they killed her off. I could not, and when they killed her, I, I wanted to freaking celebrate. I'm like, good, dead weight gone. You know, it's just like. No, there's shows where, you know, somebody comes on. Andrew in Walking Dead or I don't know Sopranos because that's a show you and I used to watch what would you say in Sopranos uh, I don't know I don't know I have to think about that too but anyway I'm trying to make <laughs> it's my been a while yeah, but yeah I, I... but there's there's actors come on it's a great show Walking Dead is a great show and like you said Andrew comes on I'm yeah. going to the bathroom type of thing yeah. like in Game of Thrones there's nothing like that I got one hold door Hodor. Well, that's... There's not enough Hodors. I don't like the way he says Hodor. I think he's... Hodor. Hodor. He's supposed to... Nah, I think he sucks. You got it. I think, I think somebody else could have said Hodor better. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, okay. I get your point there. Hodor. Almost sounds irrelevant. All right, so okay. the, last, the, the last epiphany? I would end on Hodor. You would end with that. Uh, all right. Um, well, Valor Morgulis... Valo Morgales and uh, Valo de Harris. Valo de Harris. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, that's it. And uh, I guess we'll have another podcast soon. Yes, yeah, stay tuned. Thanks. <laughs>